Welcome to today's program and this is a very unique program because I'm speaking with my son Peter Wooding and his daughter Anna Wooding, my granddaughter, across in North Wales and through the amazing technology of today we're able to do this interview via Skype. So first of all Peter and Anna thank you for being on the program. Good to be with you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, Peter, tell us a little bit about the work in Ukraine, first of all, where, what you do there and, um, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the reasons why you began working at this special needs home. Yes, yeah, so I was taking a team to Beslan in Russia a long time ago with Assist Europe, for which I'm still the director, but uh, I got my visa refused to go back the following year. And both you and myself met a guy called Jeff Thompson, the founder of Mercy Projects from Murrieta in California at a conference in Poland. And he told me about a special needs children's center in Konotop, Ukraine. So I took an Assist Europe team the following year to do a summer camp and ended up uh, helping establish the charity Mercy Projects in the UK and have been going back to run these summer camps at the Special Needs Centre ever since then, uh, five summers in a row. That's just one of the many projects that uh, Mercy Project supports, as well as orphanages, uh, fostering families, and uh, sponsoring foster families, and sponsoring children, as well as other ministry centres. So it's, it's a real privilege to be part of this uh, great ministry. Tell us a little bit about um, this home that you're working at. Yeah, it's called the Hearts of Love Centre. It's run by an amazing lady called Lena Yushchenko, whose daughter is special needs herself. She's epileptic. And she just really felt there was a need in her community to have a resource centre to support both the children and their families uh, that have special needs, because otherwise they felt so isolated. They all kept coming to her home wanting support and spiritual support and she desperately needed a building to to look after all these people and uh, mercy projects after many years of lena praying was able to help her buy the building and now support all the ongoing work there that's great now let's uh, fast forward to quite recently anna first of all anna is this your first radio interview yeah, it's my first radio interview. <laughs> wow, well done. Well, uh, Anna, you are quite a dancer, and um, uh, I want to congratulate you. You're going to be in a special uh, theatre performance over Christmas in uh, North Wales. There, uh, It's called a pantomime, but you were dancing, uh, doing a special worship song at your church, and somebody's heart was really touched with that. First of all, tell us what was the song and what happened. Um, the song was called My Redeemer and um, I decided a few weeks before um, it was on Easter Sunday and I decided a few weeks before that I wanted something to do in the service um, and I felt the Lord wanted me to do something in church so I decided to um, do a dance in front of the church and um, while I was doing it um, after the dance one of the ladies came up to me in the church and said she felt really um, emotional watching me. She felt the Lord wanted me to do a bit more. So she said um, she suggested going to Ukraine um, to the summer camp and teaching dance to the children. And I was a bit like, uh, I don't really know. I wasn't too sure, but she kind of um, persuaded me and I felt the Lord wanted me to go as well. So, yeah. Well, have you, had you ever been on one of these mission trips before, Anna? No, I haven't, so I was quite nervous going. Yeah, what what were you nervous about? Um, Probably not being able to speak their language, and it was my first time as well, so I didn't know what to expect, and having my dad there made me a bit more nervous as well. <laughs> so what was, what was your dad telling you then? He was giving me advice, and he was saying how lovely the children will be, and just um, saying how welcome they are, and um, the... He said that when you get there, then you'll feel like the Lord will just help you and that he'll be there for you and that there'll be that special moment that you'll always remember. So that kind of made me feel better when I went. That's wonderful. Well, Peter, talk us through. You, you fly 
originally from is it Manchester eventually finish up in Kiev um, that's quite a short journey isn't it yeah it's not too bad uh, there's no direct flights from Manchester so we usually stop somewhere like Amsterdam and then stay the night in Kiev and then we get on a long train journey to Konotok because it's quite a distance from Kiev and it's always wonderful having both people on the teams that have been the previous year and then new people seeing their first reaction when they arrive at the centre and particularly when they finally meet the children there's always this sort of shyness the first day but within a few hours all this suppressed emotion and affection that uh, they don't always get at home or in school particularly they just pour it into you and I think Anna was just overwhelmed the amount of uh, girls wanting to hold her hand and hugging her and piggybacks and they were <laughs> face painting her she was completely covered in face paint and it was just it was just like we were lavished with this love you seem to always receive so much more than you give to these children and and tell me a little bit about some of the challenges the physical challenges the mental challenges the kids have yeah there's uh, all sorts from autism to down syndrome epilepsy problems with their legs some of them only have one arm uh, some of them you know on the surface you you wouldn't know they had kidney problems or uh, different different issues some are more obvious but all of them are just desperate for some love some acceptance to feel like they uh, are not abandoned because they many of them live in these tower blocks and feel completely isolated but when they come to this center they can make new friends because they're not allowed to go to school. So it's wonderful to, to be able to support something, not just in the summer, but year round, because these amazing ladies, they teach these children right through the year. Otherwise, they, they wouldn't get an education. Now, Anna, when you first arrived, uh, were, you, were you nervous? Uh, what was your first reaction when you saw the kids? Um, as soon as I saw the kids, I just felt happy and I felt like they were... They were, the Lord was working through them and I felt like they were so welcoming and they were all giving me hugs and I felt so happy and I felt like the Lord was working through them to help me and made me feel special. Now when you started to teach them the dancing, tell us a little bit about what, what was the first dance that you, uh, what, what was the music you taught them and, and how did they do? Um, I taught them a kind of modern dance routine um, that I choreographed myself and it was to um, Crystal Lewis, God's Been Good to Me and I felt the Lord wanted me to use that song because the lyrics and um, I teach them the dance routine every day and all of them were so eager to learn and they just wanted to show me what they could do and some of them, like one girl only had one arm and one of them had problems with her legs but she was just smiling and enjoying it and yeah, I was just making sure that I wasn't just teaching them a dance I was being there for them and being like a friend or an older sister and I felt like the Lord wanted me to show that while I was there. And uh, would they stay on after the class and, and show off yeah. their <laughs> their dances? Yeah, they were, I would put the music on at the end of the class and they would just go for it and they would just show me what they could do and they would all get in the middle and we all would clap along and yeah it was great fun. Wow. We're speaking with Peter Wooding and uh, Anna Wooding in her first radio interview. And uh, she's just done her first missions trip to Konotop, Ukraine with uh, with Peter Wooding, my uh, my son. And uh, Peter, just um, explain the, the team that you had besides Anna. Who were some of the people were there and what were they teaching the, uh, the kids? Yeah, we had uh, a group of 11 of us, including myself and Anna. Uh, about seven or eight were from my church in Chester in England. Some of them teachers, some artists and photographers, um, a musician. So we would teach like Bible class each morning and then some crafts. And then each day Anna would teach her dance. One uh, team member would teach basketball, another girl art and photography, and then another uh, music. And so it was wonderful seeing all these activities going on. We had like a running Bible theme of the children being on board the ship, the HMS Obedience, and learning how to trust and obey their captain, who is obviously Jesus. And at the end of the camp, 10 of the 40 children gave their lives to Jesus, which is just wonderful that they made Jesus their captain. 
Wow. Anna, what was that like for you on that last night when all these kids made that commitment to Christ? Yeah, it was very emotional seeing all the children, um, see them all crying and seeing them praying to God. And that was really special. And especially when um, all of them were, like every single person was praying for Jesus to come in their lives. And that was just a special moment for me. That's wonderful. So, uh, Connertop, uh, is it just a tiny little place, Pete? Uh, yes, I mean, it's, uh, I guess you'd imagine it's a small town of a, a few thousand people. So compared to Kiev, yeah, it is kind of remote and it's, it's just a place no one's heard of. And yet God's really put it on a heart to, to keep going back to this place. Now, in one of the earlier trips, uh, Peter, didn't you have uh, a tragedy there where one of the kids passed away? Yeah, after our very first trip, uh, on that trip, we did a lot of home visitations, which was really heartbreaking. And there was this particular boy, Ruslan, and I could tell he just, you know, had enough. He would just lie on his sofa all day and was so ill. And a few months later, we heard he passed away. And uh, But the ladies that run the Hearts of Love Center were able to spend those final few hours with him, just ministering to him, and they led him to Christ. So... Uh, these ladies are amazing how they they serve these children in this way wow uh, Anna when you uh, when you finally arrived in the place uh, did your nerves go away or did you were you nervous the whole time um, most of it my nerves would go away um, especially when I was doing the dance workshops I was I wasn't as nervous as I thought I would be but when I have to get up front and speak, I get a little bit nervous, but you kind of overcome that when you know that they're all there because they want you to be there and they're all doing it. Um, yes. Every single person there is um, a Christian and, yeah, makes you feel uh, a little bit better. Now, when uh, when it was first put to you that uh, would you like to go on this missions trip, um, were you panic-stricken? Did you try and think of excuses why you shouldn't go? Yeah, I think everybody does that when they don't know what to expect. I wasn't expecting um, such welcome, and I was really surprised when I got there. But beforehand, I was I was asking my dad so many questions um, on the plane. I was asking him all these questions about what, what I would be like. And what you were, what sort of questions? I was asking him um, what are the children like, um, what happens when you get there. Um, what sort of stuff do you do, stuff like that, just to get more familiar with it all, but I was still nervous anyway. <laughs> now, you can gather from Anna's little accent that she's from North Wales, and Peter was born in Birmingham, came to know the Lord in America, and uh, is back now uh, working in Britain uh, in media and running uh, uh, Assist Europe and also Mercy, Mercy Projects, I think it is, Pete. Tell us what Mercy Projects is all about. It's about bringing justice and hope to at-risk children. So it's bringing that hope and justice to those that have been marginalized, primarily throughout Eastern Europe, in Ukraine, Armenia, Kosovo, and in the future we want to expand that work. But we primarily have a sponsorship program where people can uh, provide ongoing sponsorship for either a child, a foster family, an orphanage or some kind of ministry center like the Hearts of Love Center. So it's a wonderful ongoing work and then we do a range of summer camps uh, in all of those locations in Armenia, Kosovo and Ukraine and we even do winter camps. They're pretty cold but they're a very <laughs> special time of the year because they happen during the Orthodox Christmas time in January. Peter, if uh, a parent's listening to this and they've got a son or a daughter that has never been uh, on, a, on a missions trip, what advice would you like to give them? I'd say listen to the Lord if it's the right timing for you, but uh, I definitely would say go for it. To have that experience for a young person at such an early age is such a great preparation for future life to be able to get a perspective on how God can use you in another place, in another part of the world, uh, I'd say just go, just go for it, and uh, you know, don't worry about the finances. God will provide. Anna sold loads of cupcakes, and that got her to Ukraine, and <laughs> everyone helped support her and donate gifts for her to go. 
So yeah. I just say go for it. It's it's a wonderful opportunity to actually go as a family, you know, with my, a father and daughter together. It's it's a great experience. Anna, did you sleep before the uh, the flight that uh, right at the beginning? <laughs> were um, you up nearly all day, all night? Yeah, I was. Um, I got to sleep quite early because I knew that I had to get to. I had to get up early because of the plane flight. Um, but. Yeah, I kind of had, I didn't have much sleep, but yeah. <laughs> now, a young girl maybe listening to this, Anna, who hasn't done a trip like this, what would you say to them? I would just say go for it and you learn so much like from the children, you learn so much from them more than that you're teaching them. You learn that you need to be more grateful for what you have and it, it gets more emotional when you're there and I would just say go for it and you learn so much and yeah was there one particular child that you got very close to yeah there was one girl called Dorinka who was in a wheelchair um and she was very sweet she would always say Anna and then I knew <laughs> that I had to go up to her and she would always want me to hold her hand um so I would hold her hand for like hours and she would just cry and cry and I would just hug her and especially on the last day she got really upset because we were leaving but I just hugged her and said that I'll be here next year and yeah that's wonderful now Pete just to tell our audience uh, a little bit about your family um, how did you meet your wife and uh, who are the other girls yes I met Sharon on the mission field uh, with youth with a mission uh, way back in 1990 had moved back to the UK from California to serve the Lord in YWAM and we were married in 92 just over 20 years ago and our eldest daughter Sarah was born in 94 and then Anna who's uh, 16 which is remarkable she's been on her first mission trip at the age of 16 and then our youngest daughter is Abigail who's 11. And uh, Abigail's quite a runner I understand. Yeah, she's she like, like a cross, dad. <laughs> she won a cross country race earlier this year, and she's she's joined an athletics club now. So, yeah, we're hoping she'll go to Rio for the next Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> now, describe the little city or town you live in, Buckley. I mean, here you are doing international ministry. You're on CBN regularly, and uh, but you live in a very very small community. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's called Buckley, and it's known for its brickworks, bit of an industrial background to the town. Uh, it's just into North Wales on the border with England, near a city called Chester where we go to church. And uh, But as you come into the border of Wales, suddenly all the signs are in English and Welsh, and I've we've lived here 18 years, but I can still hardly say anything in Welsh. <laughs> can Anna speak any Welsh? And if she can, maybe say a few words. Um, Barada Sitouti. Um. <laughs> so, so, what does that mean? Um, good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Now, um, when when the idea was first floated, uh, Pete, for Anna to go on this trip, um, did you did the couple go directly to Anna, or did they come to you first, to, who said they wanted to help her? I think they came to me and uh, said I really think Anna should come and we both prayed about it. I showed Anna all the videos of previous trips so she could really decide and uh, didn't want to put any pressure. I really wanted her to make that decision so when she turned around and said she would uh, I was just so thrilled. I was nervous like Anna was you know how the experience would be for her and you're always protective of your daughter but uh, I'm so pleased that we had that special opportunity. Wow. For you, Pete, what was the highlight while you know, watching Anna teaching these kids? I think the highlight was on the last night when they put on a concert in the community hall where they perform all the things they've been learning in the week. So when these children uh, performed the dance, Anna made sure she didn't perform it with them, but she stood behind the audience just to kind of direct them a bit. And it was oh. such a proud moment to see that the smiles not only on the children's faces but their parents faces to see what they'd managed to achieve in such a short space of time uh, th that was just uh, one of those wonderful moments and why why are the kids not allowed to go to school the, it's just eastern europe seems to be very behind 
as far as what it provides for special needs children. So they have no uh, no resources to teach them in normal schools, and there are no special needs schools. So the Hearts of Love Centre is pretty unique for Eastern Europe. So uh, they've just got a bit of catching up to do, and we just need to keep praying that uh, you know we can help them get these resources so that you know this is just a, a drop in the ocean for Conatop. This is thousands and thousands of children that that need this kind of support mm. what what uh, what was your impression of ukraine anna was it um did you have any idea what it was going to be like no i had no idea what to expect but when i got there everything looked when i got to kiev everything looked like all the buildings were like amazing and big and like film looked like a film set although when you yeah. get to Conatop, it's quite um, rough. It's quite a rough area, and there's um, houses that are quite rough with ceilings falling down. And I kind <laughs> of, I kind of felt a bit sorry for them, and I felt like I kind of prayed that the Lord would just be with them in Conatop, and I prayed that everyone in Conatop will get to know Jesus. And um, I thought that it needed that love in Conatop, and I felt yeah. like yeah. we were there because we wanted to show that love for them. Where where did you sleep? Were there, were there was there accommodation at the at the house, the home there? Yeah, we yeah we stayed at the center. Um, we stayed like in bunk beds and not bunk beds in like um, camp, beds. camp beds with the rest of the team in the That's center. Good. Pete, um, you, you're sitting there watching this generation. You know, my dad was a missionary. Uh, I've been involved with missions. You've been involved in missions, and now another generation is involved. What does that? How does that feel to you? Ah, oh, just very proud to to keep that legacy going. You know, especially as it wasn't something I initiated. It was obviously the Lord. You know, separately touched Anna's heart, and she's desperate to go back again, which is which is wonderful. So, yeah, I couldn't be prouder. Oh, that's wonderful. Why do you want to go back, Anna? To see the children again and just to, um, I like, promised to them that I would be back. <laughs> um, oh, but, yeah, just to see them again and to show them love and be there for them and now, teach them more how, dance. How do, how do you choose the music for, you know, when you do these dances? I usually um, look through different Christian musics and if I feel like the right one with the right lyrics and I'll use that for different dances but I felt the song that I used for them was um, all about um, being there for each other and having the God by your side and that he's been there for you and I felt like that was a good message to use. That's great. Now Peter, if people want to know more about the work you're involved with, are there websites they can go to? Yeah, for the people listening in America, our website is mercyprojects.com. That's mercyprojects with an S, dot com. Or our UK site is mercyprojects.co.uk. And people can also email me, peter at mercyprojects.co.uk. I'd love to hear from people if they want to find out about coming on a team or sponsoring a child. That's wonderful. Now, um... Uh, what are you? Ne- what are your next? When is you going to be your next trip? We're hoping to go in January, just around the, just after Christmas time, and visit a few of the projects. And then we're looking at maybe doing like a special medical team. We had three te- three people on the team this year that were medical experts. But when there's a summer camp going on at the same time, it's hard to really give you know sufficient time to the children and the parents that are really wanting some medical advice so we're looking at maybe next spring uh, taking a specific medical team to really provide some training for the staff and and more advice for the parents of these special needs children well we've been uh, talking with uh, peter wooding and anna wooding who's just done her first mission trip anna what is the greatest lesson you've learned from going on this trip the big lesson I've learned is to um, trust the Lord and not worry about anything um, just to trust him if you're worried or stressed about anything then he's got always, he always got something planned for you and no matter what he'll provide anything you want for him if you pray and 
um, do something back for the children and I felt like the biggest lesson was to just trust him and um, go what, with whatever he wants you to do which is why I went. Now you're, you're like a lot of uh, young people today you love to be on Facebook and that sort of stuff and yet probably most of these kids have never heard of Facebook or even seen a computer did you show them a little bit about uh, your phone and how you would do the Facebook yeah. stuff? Yeah, I would show them my iPod and they were always playing with it and they were just so, they were so like confused. They were like, what's this? What's that? And I was showing them everything and it was like a different world to them seeing an iPod or seeing a phone. And it was just so different to see their perspective on something. And I felt kind of bad that I had all this stuff and that they're just happy from having a headband or some sweets or something and I felt <laughs> kind of bad that I had a mobile phone and iPod and all these other things and yeah it was just it was kind of weird seeing their perspective on things that we have and our perspective on what they have as well so it's quite different. Well we've been speaking with Peter Wooding and Anna Wooding who has recently both returned from Karnatop in Ukraine and I want to thank you both for being on this transatlantic broadcast. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. Thank you.